Hi, I'm John Collins. I'm an affiliate at the Berkman Klein Center, and I work on uh, digital finance issues. I also founded a little nonprofit in the state of Delaware uh, called the First State FinTech Lab, and among other things, we work on access to opportunity. So today, I want to talk about the cashless economy. I think probably many of you are wondering, uh, is there actually a cash economy? And in the words of the Wu-Tang Clan, uh, cash rules everything around me, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Uh, and there are a lot of dollar, dollar bills, probably surprising to you. Um, in fact, the cash economy in the United States is $2.3 trillion uh, per year. To put that in a little bit of perspective, the overall gross uh, domestic product of the country, the, the size of the economy per year, is um, about $19 trillion. So smart people here, 2.3 out of 19, it's pretty significant, uh, even though many of us probably don't use a ton of cash. Um, so think about like what you have in your wallet right now. I'll pull mine out. Uh, I have a business credit card. I have a personal credit card. I have a debit card. I do have cash because I won a bet this weekend uh, at a Kentucky Derby party, uh, but it's the only reason I have it. Um, and then aside from my wallet, I obviously have a phone, right? A smartphone, in fact, a cracked one, but it still works. And so on here, I've got Venmo, I've got Apple Pay, I've got my Starbucks app. So even in situations where I might not have my wallet, uh, I have this, and I can access a lot of commerce nowadays uh, via that. And I'm not alone. Uh, in fact, uh, the Federal Reserve has taken a look at uh, how many payment mechanisms the average American has, and 50% of us have six plus ways that we can pay for things. Uh, so you've seen, and you've seen that increase over time, right? There's only more FinTech applications, more types of credit cards coming out. This is a really bad graph, but I just want you to take a look at that dark line that goes down. That's the amount of cash being used as the two other lines at the top there, which are uh, debit cards and credit cards, are increasing, right? And that makes a lot of sense, right? Your increased use of this. Um, Merchants are seeing this as well. So Sweet Green, which is a luxury coleslaw merchant, uh, they uh, found that about 10% of their customers use cash, only 10. So they said, you know what? Uh, we're not gonna accept cash anymore. We're gonna be a cashless store. And there's some reasons for that, good reasons in fact. Uh, it means, makes transactions uh, quicker. Uh, it makes uh, places that have a lot of cash you know, less susceptible to theft. Um, and so they said, look, we're just gonna be a cashless store. And a number of other stores have, have done this too. And that's all great, right? Like we're a bunch of internet nerds. We've got smartphones. We can go out and go to Bluestone Lane or go to Sweetgreen or go wherever uh, is cashless and we can access the, the economy. And that's all good. Well, it's not really good. It's not good for everybody. Uh, 8.4 million people in this country are unbanked. That's about 6.5% of the population. Uh, where I spend a lot of time, Washington, D.C., uh, about 25% of the African American population is unbanked and about 36% are underbanked. And so what happens is when you have populations that don't have access to financial services, then you create places where uh, they must have access to financial services, uh, you exclude them. And you create, as these cities get more expensive, more and more gentrified areas that, that are exclusionary. And the Civil Rights Act in the United States requires, and in fact um, um, you know, maintains that people have equal access uh, to the enjoyment uh, of public accommodations, like retail goods. Um, so cities and, and jurisdictions and governments are responding to this in different ways. In fact, Massachusetts in 1978 passed a law saying, look, you've got to accept cash everywhere. Um, and you've seen more recently, as these stores have, have um, kind of put out these proposals, other cities follow suit. So the city of Philadelphia more recently, the city of New York, the, city, uh, the state of New Jersey have passed legislation to say, look, you've got to accept cash. Um, we're banning these cashless stores. Uh, and so where does that leave us? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you any solutions today uh, but in this five-minute talk. But on one side, look, we've got a system uh, that, that is making transactions easier and cheaper in some cases, but it's excluding a large part of the population. So that's a problem. Uh, bans are, are blunt policy instruments that certainly solve the problem in part, but they, they don't really get the underlying issue, which is we need to provide better access to financial services for people who don't have it. Um, Part of the solution might be innovation. It might be sort of more fintech applications. Uh, it might be regulation, because a big part of the problem is that uh, fees and expenses related to financial services can be expensive, especially as a percentage of income. Uh, but regardless, what the policy focus needs to be on and should be on is making sure that more underserved um, and underrepresented populations, more diverse groups of people have access to these services and to the wider economy. Thank you.